What are you really doing with lights? How much control do you really have? If you think of a tailor who cuts and weaves and snips cloth in order to convert something that's very bland into a garment, we do the same thing. We cut and snip and weave light. We tailor the light, we structure the light for some design purpose. If you think of a laser pointer and you had to shine that onto a wall, it's just going to look like a dot of light. But what we do in our lab is we are actually able to shape that dot into unique and interesting shapes. By structuring light, what we can do is create independent spatial patterns which would, for example, map onto an alphabet. We use these structures because they have special properties, like they don't interact. And so you can pile a lot of structures on top of each other, and then when you send it to the other end, you can unpile them without losing the information. These unique shapes of light allow us to be able to do certain experiments, such as quantum entanglement experiments, where we're able to increase the dimensionality of the states that we're looking at. Now we sit in the School of Physics, and that means that what we want to do with our structured light, our patterns of light, is to use them for fundamental science studies. And we want to use those patterns for lots of applications, for economic impact or social impact. We can enhance things like optical communications, metrology, astronomy, microscopy. So structured light influences all these other fields of science as well as everyday life. What I'm looking at is trying to structure light to be able to enhance processes such as additive manufacturing, also laser cutting and welding. We can produce more affordable, higher quality laser eye surgery options. The project I'm working on at the moment is high dimensional teleportation. Because of the way quantum physics principles work, you instantaneously get the information transferred from you to the other person. It obviously makes it very secure. We can also do things such as high bandwidth communication because by increasing the shapes of light you can increase the number of information carriers. If you think back to the last century, even as soon as 20-30 years ago, people would make telephone calls with the electrons going down copper wire. When you send data down across the planet, it's light down fiber optic. So electronics has been replaced by photonics. And we see this as an emerging technology that's going to revolutionize how we live in, in the coming century. Leading our structured light group is Professor Andrew Forbes, and he's an A-rated researcher. He's world-renowned and well-known within the structured light community across the globe. Life is very short, and I want to make the highest impact I can. To make an impact, you need to be part of an organization that has some strategic vision. And WITS, when I joined, had such a vision. I had a vision to become number one in the country, number one on the continent, to really let their excellence shine. And I, I like to be part of an organization that, that strives for excellence. I might be biased, but I believe that FITS has the best physics department on the continent and one of the best physics departments in the world. FITS is very competitive in terms of uh, science, you know, doing science that is internationally recognized. I think people are attracted by the competitive level as well as the quality of research that's produced here. You get a feeling that everyone's really interested in their research and you want to push the bounds and make a mark in, in the world. I believe there's a reason why our group is successful. It is partly the students, they're very good. WITS produces fantastic students. But that alone wouldn't account for our success. I think the difference is this notion of creativity in science. Often we neglect it. The creativity determines what problem you select. It determines what you do with that problem, having selected it, how far you take it. How crazy are you prepared to be in the ideas that you tackle? 
And then it's also about bravery. It's about being able to put yourself out there for serious criticism. When I give talks around the world, and I give many of them, I always tell them, I'm working at the number one university in South Africa. It's produced four Nobel laureates, and we're looking for our fifth.